What is going on guys, today we're going to be looking at the desaturation node. So this node basically does exactly what it says, it desaturates uh, a part of the material. So if we were to look at the cannon for example here, I've already got it set up with a bunch of other stuff I can control. And if I write saturation in, I've got it nicknamed sat. And as I turn this up, we can desaturate the part of mesh. So this is actually just on the cannon bit here, so if we look like right here, it says zero. And if you actually go negative, you'll start uh, basically saturating it instead. So minus 10, you get super saturated. And if you go 10, you'll invert your saturations. If you go, so if you're at the value of one, you'll completely desaturate. As you go above it, you'll start basically inverting the saturation. All right. So how do you set that up? Actually, first I'll say what the uses for it could be, right? So if you're in an environment, you might say, oh, I could just desaturate the whole thing. You could do that in your post-processing, right? But if you have certain parts that look a little bit too saturated or, or a little like not saturated enough, you can then just use the material to slightly bring them up and down instead of re-exporting them more saturated to make it a bit more dynamic. So let's create our material. We're going to call this desaturation test. Let's throw it in our cannon, a lot of cannon materials or textures and then throw them where they need to go. I've showed how to set this up before. Boom, boom, boom. Sweet. And that should be our, that part of the texture done, right? So if we, once you grab this and throw this on the cannon, we're done. Now, I can't desaturate it now. First, let's right click it, create a material instance and throw that on. And if we open this up, we won't have any parameters we want to change. So let's come into here, move this away. Drag off of this, right in desat. Hold one and left click to get your parameter. We're gonna convert it. And we're gonna call it a, just desat, just whatever you want. If you wanna get that quicker, you can hold S and left click, which will create your scalar automatically. I have the habit of one left click and then just converting to a scalar, but it really doesn't matter which way you do it. I plug that in. At a value of zero, it won't do anything. So if we click apply, apply, and I double click it, as you can see, zero is nothing. I turn that up and that color will slowly disappear. And boom, your desaturation node. Again, if you go negatives, you'll uh, saturate it more. And if you go above the value of one, you'll invert saturation. Now, you can, if you want to make sure you don't go between these values, for example, we can, so if you only want it to desaturate, you can set your slider minimal and slider maximum. So if you set maximum to one and click apply, you will now limit. So if we've got that, it will now limit the ability. So you can only go between zero and one. I like having this one open anyway, or at least to the value of maybe minus two or minus one. So that way you can at least saturate it a little bit. And yeah, this just basically helps you in your environment or your props. So in this case, I've got a prop of like, what, six axes on it or six elements on it. It just gives you the ability to micromanage the little parts of your asset. Like if I was like, oh, I want the brass, the parts that I've got selected right now to be more saturated, I can go minus 0.2 and we can have a little bit more saturation on it. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream and I'll catch you next time.